All right, folks, welcome back to another Elden Ring video. And today we're going to be covering my Clayman Sorcerer build, which is a build I've been working on for a few weeks now. I wanted something that's going to excel in PvP and still be usable in PvE. And it's really, really fun, this build. It's an intelligence-based build based on the Clayman Harpoons, which many of you guys will know is one of the best intelligence weapons in the game because it's very customizable. It's, I believe, the only weapon in the game that is intelligence-based, but is basic, can be obviously increased to 25 and can take an Ash of War. So without further ado, let's just have a little look at what we're running in the build. So here they are, the Clayman's Harpoons. They are both at plus 25 here. Um, we're also running the Lustat's Glintstone Staff alongside it, so that's the weapon choices. Now, this is for your melee, obviously, and we've got the, the Glintstone Staff sitting in the background to start off fights. So I always have that in my left hand, because I'll explain in a minute, you want the different Ash of War with the, the right hand one here. But the, the Staff in here is in your left hand, so it's really easy just to target an enemy and then just hit the left mouse button for me or whatever you're playing on controller um, and just blow things up from afar. And then if anyone gets close, it's just a quick swap over to this and you're all good and you can start meleeing people. Now the most important things on the Clayman's Harpoons are the Ashes of War. So on the first one here, which is in the right hand, we've got the Loretta Slash, which is, as you can see, a single slash and then come back down with a second swoop, which deals crazy high damage by the way. It is really, really strong. And plus, I love the moveset on it. You get a little bit of um, invulnerability frames on that first one. And then you can also sort of go and change the direction, as you can see, really easily. So if someone does dodge roll out the way in the first hit, you just go off to the left and then swipe them there. If they dodge roll the other way, you can come back like this. It's insanely customizable. And for PvP, I honestly think this is one of the most underrated Ashes of Wars in the game. So that's what I'm choosing on the first one. The second one here has the Golden Vow. Now, I've run quite a few builds before. I think if anyone watched my previous video, I had enough faith in my build just to run Golden Vow and also Blame Grant Me Strength. But this build, I've managed to do it with absolutely no faith whatsoever because I didn't even realize it was in an Ash of War. So all I have to do is at the start of the battle, I have the two spears available right here and you just quickly two-hand the left-hand one, which means you can use the Ash of War on it. So there we go, Golden Vow is now active. Now you just literally press this button again and it switches back to your Lestat staff. Then, oh, better take a flask. The next buff is the Scholar's Armament. Now, there has been videos on this before, but the Scholar's Armament on top of the Clayman's Harpoon with high intelligence is pretty insane, especially using the Stats Glintstone Staff, because the scaling comes straight from the staff that you're doing it on, so you want the highest scaling staff you have. So this is a plus 10 with stats with 413 sorcery scaling, which will give us the most amount of damage on here. Now, I run this build to begin with, just basically, it would depend on the situation, but if it's in PvP, let's say, I'll just be popping them with little shots or or maybe hitting something like the cannon here or, um, yeah, the Abdullah's Moonblade, any of that sort of stuff. Just popping them from afar. And even when they get close, if you've got your Glintstone Staff in your left hand and you've got the Spear in your right hand too, you can easily just Loretta Slash like this and just spank people like that, which is pretty useful. But if you really want to do crazy damage, you have to time it and quickly switch to your other one here. Now, as you can notice, Golden Vow has run out. I believe it's about 30 seconds, which is fine for like a PvP fight or if you want to do a bunch of damage in PvE. But yeah, you just want to be able to switch to both of these and then you can start double hitting people, plus the slash, come back around the other way. And then, yeah, it's absolutely nuts. Uh, so let's quickly put the buffs on and let's just kill some stuff here and let you see what sort of damage this can do. So, as I said before, switch to this. It's a pretty easy setup, guys. And it's not more than two buffs, so generally in PvP, folk get a bit funny if you use much more than two buffs. So this is just about the sweet spot, I find. Um, it's considered bad practice. So that's me all geared up. Let's just take out these two. And let's run up to a couple of these guys and let's just see what we can do. Do a... Oh, I missed him. <laughs> That's how good I am at this game. Let's do a nice jump attack. Boom. Easy, does it. Come on, let me hit you. Boom. And look at that. Crazy damage. Um, so yeah, that is that is the build, guys. Um, and then obviously I can shoot stuff from afar. Now let's have a little look at the rest of the stats. Then we'll go and kill the big guy up here and see how quick we can do that. So we are using the Spellblaze pointed hat 
because the spell blades oh i've taken it off instead of actually showing you what i need to do um the spell blades pointed hat here strengthens glintstone sorcery skills which does increase the damage that the scholar's armament puts on by quite a bit actually i originally tried to do this build using the full spell blade set and i was actually an equip load of light which to be honest doesn't really seem that worth it in this game i wish they would upgrade the light because it doesn't feel like light is that much better to roll than medium so at the moment i don't really see any point in playing light because you're just going to get one shotted so that's why I, I opted out of doing that but it will do more damage if, if your goal has been a complete glass cannon the full spell blade set will definitely give you that but i don't think it's the wisest thing to do so i've just put the hat on because it gives a reasonable boost to it and um, it also boosts all your other stuff like your cannon and um, any of your little glintstone spells which i use quite a lot of so it's really really useful this hat then obviously the good old bulgo armor now some some folk especially in pvp might be funny with you using this because it is such high poise but i use it amongst other things so it's not too bad but we are using the bulgo's armor I'm just running any old gauntlets. I've got the Knight Cavalry ones here because they are pretty cool, but I want to hit that medium load, which for me just now I think is 69, so I'm just below it. So I've managed to get maximum stats for the build that I'm using here. Now onto the Talismans. We want Magic Scorpion Charm because it raises magic attack. Now it does lower damage negation, but we have got some super tanky things on here, so that doesn't make much of a difference. And yeah, the magic attack really does apply pretty hard when it comes to the, uh, the Scholar's Armament. We're definitely using the Shard of Alexander because that will give you a massive boost to your um, skills, which we obviously are using quite a bit with Loretta Slash. And then the last two here, Great Jar's Arsenal and Erdtree's favour is just to get this equip load of medium we need while still wearing some really, really high um, poise armour. Um, you could substitute the Great Jar's Arsenal out, I think, and then just kind of lower your armour a little bit, and this build would be absolutely fine. I mean, there's plenty of other stuff. You could probably put in, um, let's see, what's it called again? You could probably put in something like, well, you could actually put the Bull Goat's Talisman in and just get even more poise. That puts you up to 105. But again, I think a lot of people in PvP are a bit funny about using over 100 poise. So I've gone against that. I guess the other options would be putting in Radigan Icon or your Graven Mass Talisman because those two will boost the initial sorceries that you push. But I've kind of gone more based on the harpoons on this build rather than the staff. I still start off every fight with my staff, but I tend to just jump into these and then try and finish them off with them. So I've gone with these two and I pretty much put Erdtree's Favor plus two on every single build that I use just now because you just get so much bang for your buck with this talisman. Your maximum HP, stamina, and the quick load. Um, it's one of the more difficult ones to get because you have to get to right to the end game to actually get it. So it's not going to be attainable for everyone early. But there is the lower versions of it, Air Tree. Here you go, Air Tree's Favor and Air Tree's Favor plus one, which are easy enough to get. But this one is the best bang for its buck in the game, I believe. So I put this on most of my builds. And then the Flask of Wondrous Physics. Again, this is actually something I didn't use there, so I could boost even more damage. But magic shrouding cracked here temporarily boost magic attacks this is much better than giving it plus five intelligence because we're already at the cap for intelligence with this build and then the cerulean hidden tier this just helps us out the start of the battle because you're going to get a bunch of free attacks and you're going to keep your fp because you will use a fair bit of fp using the loretta slash and, and things like that so let's go ahead and let's just buff our guy up and we'll kill this big guy up here to see how much damage we can actually do so one buff, two buffs, three buffs here, let's go in, come on jump down, let's give him a flash, 2500 damage there, missed him the first one there, there we go, so I think I'm maybe just under two shot on him. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, it does a ton of damage. Uh, it's pretty crazy. It one shots most folk in PvP. Um, and it's really, really. The thing is, it's just so customizable because you can just move it around in midair. You can really, you know, so if they are trying to dodge it and you've got invulnerability here, you can move over this way. I can't stress how much fun this is in PvP using this. So I'm actually going to run a bunch of PvP games in a second and just let you see it in action. But first of all, let's just see what this build did to the good old Gideon the All Knowing in PvE.
So yeah, it's a, it's quite a strong build. So let's have a quick look at the, the stats we're running as well. Um, we are a level 150 character here because I like that best for PvP meta. I know there's a big argument between like 125 to 150, but I think 150 is pretty cool. Um, you can build quite a lot of cool stuff in it, and you can also still pretty much do most of the new game pluses on level 150, so Dave's making loads of characters. Um, what we're running here is definitely AT Intelligence, 100% um, the full AT, because this is just dealing damage based on intelligence, so boost that up as high as you can, and the more you boost it, the more the Scholar's Armament's going to deal even more damage scaling with the Lustat's Glintstone Staff. Now AT is this cap, Faith and Arcane, absolutely nothing into either of them. Dexterity, I've put to 12. Now, was there... Yeah, there's a... There's a 10 dexterity on here, but I'm an astrologer and I believe it's maybe like 12 dexterity off standard. I can't quite remember. Um, so I guess if you built another character, you could actually have this below 12 because you don't need the dexterity um, for any of this stuff, I believe. No, um, you don't need dexterity at all for any of that. So you just need 10 dexterity. I believe that's the starting amount for the astrologer. 12 strength, you do need that to hold the claimant's harpoon. And I believe I start on 8 as the astrologer. Um, so 12 strength you do need endurance I've put up to 29 because you do use quite a lot of stamina on this and I'm not running the the green turtle talisman which I guess could be another thing you could put in this slot here if you want to wear slightly lighter armor something like Redan set or that would work absolutely fine um, yeah so that's the endurance mind at 35 you do use a lot of FP so 35 mind's a pretty good balance I did experiment using 50 vigor and 30 mind which is totally doable i just like that a little bit more because i've found on a lot of my pvp fights i do quite a bit of sorcery beforehand so it's nice being able to have at least sort of two loretta slashes left in the bank when i go in for the kill whereas at 30 mind i found myself running out a little bit too quick and i don't get hit too much with this build and plus my armor is that strong i can afford a little bit less vigor um so it's pretty good so that is the build guys, I'm just going to run a bunch of PvP games here to finish off the video and let you see it in action. Now, I don't profess to be the best in PvP at this game, in fact this is my first Souls game of any kind, so I'm still getting used to a lot of it, but I do find this is pretty fun and I'm able to get a fair amount of wins in it. Obviously I do use a lot of spells in it because the distance fighting is pretty good, and then as soon as someone's close I can power stance the two spears and just start laying out the damage. And yeah, it seems a very strong build to me, so if you wouldn't mind please hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps the channel out. I'd like to grow this channel a little bit more, and um, for all you guys that don't know, I do have a main channel as well where I cover gacha games I haven't done for a while, so check that out too. But this is going to be my new channel guys so without further ado let's just get on with the rest of the video hope you enjoyed it and take it easy folks see you in the next video